pose. And I mean, I said it online and I'll say it again. He wasn't conditioned enough to win any pose. Yeah. You know, that's, if you had someone like Steve or Tyler judging, yes, he's not making a call out with that conditioning. No. And then to even speak on the, his glutes, if you've seen the stream, he has lumps in his glutes. It was, ugh, it was like, man, would you? What's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So, the latest bodybuilding rivalry seems to be between Tonio Burton and Raphael Brandau. It seems like this rivalry was sparked with the Arnold Classic South America results, Raphael Brandau winning that show and beating Tonio Burton, who took second. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that, into this video. Now, I do know that reading a lot of the comments... The fans of bodybuilding especially felt like this was a controversial result, whether they thought Good Vito should win or whether they thought Tonio should win. I think the fact that Raphael was noticeably off, especially from the back, which Tonio points out, and Tonio was arguably in better condition, Good Vito was arguably in better condition. I think when you combine that with the fact that this show was in Raphael's home country of Brazil, the weird call-outs at the very end. I think it further fuels that speculation. Honestly, I could have seen this going either way between Tonio and Raphael. And I have no problem with Raphael winning, nor do I believe that it was any type of conspiracy, so I want to clear that up. But if Tonio had won, I'd have no problem with that either. But it seems that Tonio did have an issue with Raphael winning, so... Tonio kind of fired the first shot here, and this was on the Muscle Discord podcast. So I think the two main highlights from this interview that a lot of people are focusing on was Tonio's comments about Raphael's conditioning and then also the judging. So Tonio says he wasn't conditioned enough to win any pose. If you had someone like Steve or Tyler, meaning Steve Weinberger or Tyler Mannion, judging, he's not making a call out with that conditioning. He has lumps in his glutes. And again, the only thing that I really thought was weird about this show was those final three callouts. They did a call out of just Good Vito and Tonio, then a call out of Good Vito and Raphael, then a call out of just Raphael and Tonio, which is almost never done at any of the bigger shows, or really at all at any of the shows. And Steve and Tyler are the guys that judge the bigger shows, typically. And I probably would agree with Tonio that Steven Tyler would have at the very least not done the callouts like that because it was very weird whether the purpose of the callouts was just to entertain the crowd whether it really counted or not if 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 it was to entertain the crowd I feel like they would do that at every show but they don't because it's just not how it's ju it's just weird so I do think the judging was weird I don't think it was some kind of conspiracy but I definitely do think it was weird and I don't think it would have happened if Steven Tyler were there but I also don't agree with the fact that he's saying Raphael wouldn't have even made a call out with that condition. I don't agree with that. Raphael was off, but he wasn't horrible. But I do agree that the lack of Steve Weinberger or Tyler Mannion led to a little bit of weird judging. And I think it's also worth pointing out we did not get a judging recap video from Tyler like he's been doing on the past couple Arnold, Arnold Classics explaining why the decision was what it was. For this Arnold Classic. And again, that probably is because he wasn't there. So he can't really speak for the judges that were. But a breakdown would have been probably helpful in this situation from one of the judges. And by the way, I should mention at the top of this video that uh, Tonio's coach did say they tried to get to the Detroit Pro. They were going to try to show up and do it. But they were past the IFBB's deadline. They would have had to register ahead of time. It was too late. Um, so they're not doing Detroit. But they did try to at the last minute. So you're not going to see 
him in Detroit, and you're not going to see that lineup with six guys. It looks like you're not going to see it change at all. So, of course, Raphael did respond because this was clearly a shot from Tonio. I mean, he essentially said he didn't belong in the call-out and then also said he didn't win a single pose against him. So Raphael's first story response was, some people cry, some people work, I like to work. And then he translates that also into Portuguese. Then he gave a really long two-part story. One was in Portuguese, one was in English, directed at Tonio. Now this is a long one, but I want to read the entire thing for context. Antonio's response to this was also pretty long. So brace yourself, buckle up. And honestly, I don't know if it was intended to be this way, but Raphael's, uh, Raphael's story is actually pretty funny. He says, hello, Tonio Burton. I'm going to explain some things to you that you either didn't understand or pretended you didn't understand. Firstly, my gym is private and was already scheduled to be closed a few days before the show just for me and my team. And even though you're going to compete against me and are not close to me, I allowed you and your team to train and create content within my gym, and I didn't even complain that you clogged the toilet and trained in your underwear. Okay, so for this part, I should mention that during the Muscle Discord podcast, there were multiple aspects of the competition that were discussed. So, he, uh, Tonio did speak on training at Raphael's gym. Then he said eventually he wasn't allowed to train there anymore as the competition got closer. Because Tonio was there like a few weeks in advance. Um, they also discussed that he felt like there was some favoritism towards Raphael. Um, he felt like if he won the Arnold Classic Brazil, he was going to need security protection because the fans were like so strongly in Raphael's favor. He also talks about the amount of people that Raphael had backstage. He also talks about how he thought the judging was unfair and some other stuff in there as well. If you guys want to see the whole thing, you can watch the podcast on Muscle Discord, but Raphael kind of addresses each point on this response. Um, so next he says, about the backstage, I only had two companions, my coach and my wife. All the other people who were there were not there for me, but for their own sponsors. But we are in Brazil, where thank God I have many friends. I was lying with my towel on the same backstage floor as you, and there weren't any exclusive privileges for me. You, you even had more companions than me. Regarding my oil painting, each athlete has to take care of their own. He's talking about getting oiled for the stage, not like an actual painting. Um, I have a friend who is doing this for me, and you should have someone on your team who can do this for you. It wasn't the championship that provided this specially for me. Regarding the result, when you complain that you were judged unfairly, you are not speaking ill of me, you are speaking ill of the judges. They are professionals trained to see who is the best as a whole and not just in one muscle group. Regarding my physique, it's not my fault if you were at your best weren't able to beat me. You at your maximum conditioning still had no separation in your quads and hamstrings, no detail in the shoulders and chest, and competed with very little muscle volume. And regarding my attitude backstage, I was there to focus on the competition and not make friends. If you really wanted to make friends, this wasn't the time. Finally, secure your qualification and see you at the Olympia. Or not, respect my country. So then, of course, Tonio promptly responded. He said, number one, no one showed any disrespect other than what you did on stage to myself in veto and then gave a push at the end of it. Two, during the mandatory poses you got in front of me during the abs and thighs. To me, it's funny. I laughed about it. Three, to all your fans commenting my page, even on my pics about my son, shows how low how low you are, how low you all are, and proves the point of how bad it would have been if I won. Four, let's be honest. You were defeated backstage, hanging your head down. Even your team came to say congrats to us. Five, you had no conditioning for stage. That's just the truth. You couldn't control your breathing. Again, true. I don't know why the truth offends you. Now, I do want to add to this. The breathing point was another thing that Tonio talked about in the Muscle Discord podcast. He said, if you if you rewatch the stream, you notice that Raphael is frequently out of breath. He looks like he's gassed at multiple points during the show. And I point this out to say that was kind of the thing that I felt like was odd about the structuring of those three callouts of the top two at the finals. Because in doing that, there was so you first had the one big first call out of the finals that everybody was in, including Raphael, Tonio, and Goodvito. 
that was one of the points that Raphael started to look out of breath. So structuring the callouts at the very end, instead of doing a callout of three, just the top three, doing three callouts of two, there was only one break given between that big callout of everybody for the top, uh, however many, it was like six guys in that first callout. And that break was given to Raphael because the very next call out, the guys had to come straight from that first call out into the call out of two was Tonio and good Vito. And Raphael was able to go off stage and catch his breath. Now, again, I don't necessarily believe it was a conspiracy, but if I wanted to, that would be something to look at and kind of ponder. Cause I did think it was odd the way those call outs were structured. And this is a point that Tonio makes that I can kind of see his point. Antonio says, uh, now I'll end this with the Brazilian people who are in my DMs welcoming and continue to show love. I appreciate you 100%. To the keyboard warriors, you guys need help. Do I think Raphael has a great physique? I said multiple times on the podcast. Yes. I said he wasn't ready. But again, I understand passion. But listen before talking. Again, Olympia Qual will come and let's see what that conditioning gets. This could have been a friendly battle like we do, but instead disrespect has to be used. All the hate that's coming, thank you for further proving my point. You guys are this mad because you think with emotions. Imagine if your God lost, I would have got it 100 times more. So I'll wrap this video up with the scorecards that Tonio is talking about here. So right at the top, you can see Raphael and Tonio. At prejudging, Raphael was winning with six. Tonio was winning with nine. At finals, Raphael also winning with 6-9 to nine for a final score of 12-18. to 18, A six-point difference between the two. Um, Raphael winning, Tonio taking second, good Vito taking third, as you guys know. So the scorecards kind of show that the judges had this as a clear victory for Raphael. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Both about the back and forth between Raphael and Tonio. Then also about the results of the Arnold Classic South America. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification icon if you have not already, and as always, I love you guys, I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out. Alright guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also check out my Instagram, at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.